Hello, this is the Lord's Legion, and welcome to a brand new movie review. And as you can see, this is a part of a series known as The Path to Infinity War, where I'm going to be reviewing each and every film within the Marvel Cinematic Universe before the release of Avengers Infinity War. And I'll try and pump out a new review every two to three days. And in this video, I am of course going to be reviewing The Incredible Hulk. Now when it comes down to The Incredible Hulk, the film itself is kind of placed in this weird position, as this film does stand out strangely in comparison to the other films in the MCU. As not only is it never really mentioned in any of the future MCU films, it's also one of these films where Marvel Studios just kinda ignores, mostly because it's part of Universal. And because of this, many people believe that The Incredible Hulk is one of the weakest films within the MCU, and honestly, this film doesn't deserve that treatment at all. And the way I see it, The Incredible Hulk is one of the most underrated films in the MCU. Now, is it as good as something like Iron Man 1 or The Winter Soldier? Heck no. But as far as I'm concerned, The Incredible Hulk is a pretty decent film in its own right. Now, when it comes down to the story, it is pretty simple as it deals with Bruce Banner being on the run from the military because he is the Hulk and he is deemed to be an unstoppable force of nature. And because of how destructive the Hulk really is, Bruce Banner goes out there just so that he can look for a cure, so that hopefully he can purge himself from the curse. And despite how the plot is pretty much basic, it is pretty much what you'd expect from a Hulk movie. And as far as the story goes, I do think that it's pretty entertaining. Now a lot of people really do look down at Edward Norton as he has been overshadowed by Mark Ruffalo through future installments. But honestly, I really do enjoy Edward Norton's take on Bruce Banner, and I personally believe that he's equally as entertaining as Mark Ruffalo's take on the character. Because they both seem so different that it's really hard to compare the two. And because this is a standalone Hulk movie, we actually do get to see Bruce Banner develop as a character more. And how we see him struggle with his anger and his control over the Hulk. And this is the most in-depth we ever seen from Bruce Banner in the MCU. And I honestly believe that Edward Norton does a very solid job job portraying Bruce Banner. Liv Tyler as Betty Brandt was pretty forgettable to me and she felt like a complete step down in comparison to Pepper Pot from Iron Man 1. Nothing terrible but she was pretty bland all the same. And it's not so much the performance but rather how the character was written as more of a cliched love interest. Tim Roth delivered a creepy performance as Emil Blonsky, as he is someone who is so hell-bent on beating the Hulk, and he would go through such lengths in order to achieve his goal. And as far as MCU villains, I believe that he's one of the more memorable villains. He's no game-changer by any stretch, but he was pretty memorable for what he was. And I really did like the twisted take on the character. William here did a pretty good job as General Ross, and he did feel pretty layered to me as he is someone who is so hell-bent on trying to stop the Hulk that in the end he was starting to lose his own humanity and he became a monster himself in a way, because he just thought that he was trying to do the right thing and trying to lock up the Hulk, while in hindsight he was doing some questionable things in order to achieve his goal. And lastly, we have Tim Blake Nelson as Samuel Stearns, and he was pretty enjoyable from what we had of him at least. And it does kinda suck that he's been more or less shafted from being the leader. And honestly, I thought he would do a pretty good job if he was given the chance. Now as far as the effects go, I do think that The Incredible Hulk hasn't aged as well as Iron Man 1, and this is mostly because they use more CG for the Hulk and the Abomination. And when you look at it, it is kinda hit and miss. Because when you look at the design for The Incredible Hulk, he looks absolutely Absolutely incredible, no pun intended. Because there was just so much detail on the model and he really looked good most times out of 10. And I'm not sure if it's just me, but I honestly thought he looked a lot better in The Incredible Hulk than he did in The Avengers. Because he just kind of looked really shaky to me in that film. And he never once really looked real to me. But once we got to Age of Ultron and onwards, he really looked so much better by that point. Because the Hulk looked so much more defined to me. And speaking of the Hulk, I really do like this portrayal of the monster because he felt so much more of a savage to me. We actually get to see the Hulk use the environment itself and use it to his advantage. Like how he tore off the cars in half and used them as gloves which actually gave me chills because it reminds me so much of Ultimate Destruction. And then we also have the Abomination into account and I honestly do believe that he still looks good even in today's standards. And I really do like this more grim approach to the character design, as it does make him stand out more than just another Green Hulk. Though to be fair, I wish they did give him the ears. And the action scenes themselves are pretty top-notch even within the MCU. 
and I still believe that the Hulk vs Abomination fight is one of the best fights in the MCU to this very day. And although the tone of the movie does feel a little strange in comparison to the future films in the MCU, this is something that really does plague the Phase 1 movies. And as far as the other films go, I don't think The Incredible Hulk really suffers all too much. Because it feels appropriate enough for a Hulk origin film. But in the end, I do feel like The Incredible Hulk deserves more recognition and more praise. And again, I don't think that's one of the best films in the MCU, but it's far from the worst either. Because aside from some of the bland performances, as well as some of the awkward CGI in some cases, I do think that The Incredible Hulk is very solid on its own. And as far as Hulk movie goes, I do think that this is a really good Hulk movie. And so for the final verdict for The Incredible Hulk, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a 7 out of 10. Because there's really quite quite a lot to enjoy out of this Hulk film. And for all of its faults, it's a million times better than the 2003 movie, because that film is beyond awful. So what do you think of The Incredible Hulk? Do you believe that this is an underrated gem, or do you believe that's one of the weakest films in the MCU? Comment below and share some thoughts. And as always, thank you guys for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. Take care and have a good one.